Today is Thanksgiving, and I hope that all of you are able to enjoy this day in your own way, whether that's like me, grilling out and watching football, uh, or that's spending time with friends, family, loved ones, whatever the case might be, or just being left the hell alone. You know, certainly could be a fun thing to do sometimes. I hope all of you are able to enjoy that day. Um, and I think in general, it's always important to, to give thanks and to be thankful for things because not just that it's Thanksgiving, but too often as a species, humans gravitate towards negativity. You see that everywhere. People love to watch train wrecks. They love to watch fights. They love to watch like the epic fails. When you, when you look at YouTube, you know, so many videos that get extremely high amounts of views have to deal with negativity in one form or another. I can certainly say that's the experience with my channel and doing this over the years is that the videos that are rants or negative in basis get way more views than the positive ones. That's an undeniable fact. And it's unfortunate, but that's the reality of who we are. And you see this play out on the internet as well. Every once in a while, you get one of these really kind of heartwarming things that goes viral on the internet, but more often than not, it's negativity and stupidity. And in a, in a year like this, like 2020, that has sucked. It has been a raging dumpster fire, even more than most years can typically be. Um, I think more now than ever, it is important to try and put the best face you can on it. Put the positive spin on it as much as you can. And, you know, find those things that you could be appreciative of and be thankful for. And, you know, the other day, as part of the 30 Days of Taker video series, I did a, a video talking about the Undertaker's final farewell being an emotional realization for me. And not necessarily an easy one, not necessarily the most comfortable of ones, but an emotional realization nonetheless. Uh, you know, ultimately, felt like a, a piece of my childhood died. A piece of me as a wrestling fan is dead R.A.P. buried. A piece of me personally, period, is dead R.A.P. buried and never to come back. And again, that's kind of the negative spin on it. Now, it's, it's reality, and it makes sense. Like, you shouldn't have to deny what it is. But, you know, I thought on a day like this, it was important to just take some time and talk about how thankful I am that I was not only able to see some of Mark Calloway's career, meaning The Undertaker, I wasn't able to just see some of it, like the last few years of his career. I wasn't somebody who just saw it, like, from the Ruthless Aggression era on. Not even. I'm not somebody that, you know, started watching during the Monday Night Wars in the Attitude Era period and caught that kind of goth mystery, I mean, the cut myself speaking tongues taker. Mm. New generation taker? Mm. I go all the way back to the beginning with this guy. Like, I can't tell you how thankful I am that I've been able to watch this guy's 30-year WWF slash E career. 30 years! I've been able to experience all of it. I've been able to see all of it. So, you know, when I interact with maybe younger fans that their time watching him is starts in 98 or 2000 or maybe it's a little later like 2003 or maybe even later like 2009 2010 like i could come at it with an entirely different perspective because i could tell the totality of the entirety of the arc of the character the stories the experiences the moments the memories because i experienced them all in person like so often is the case when you talk about greatest ever debates in sports you know, you talk about, you know, this player was better than that player or this player was better than that player. Like, you'll see a lot of uh, got younger fans, especially now, like 20s, early 30s, younger, um, that will try to argue that LeBron's the greatest player of all time, not Michael Jordan. Now, the analytics, statistics, just basic logic eyeball test would indicate that's nowhere close to true because it isn't anywhere close to true. But for a lot of them, 
They really didn't get the experience. They don't really fully have the proper context. They can't truly understand. They're going off of a lot of preconceived notions about things that just don't match reality. Whereas I can sit there and say, I saw the vast majority of Jordan's career. I can speak to it. I've also seen the entirety of LeBron's career. That doesn't mean you watched every single game, but you watched enough snippets and periods in time where you could be able to say, okay, here's what's true, here's what's not. But, you know, I didn't get to catch. I wasn't quite old enough. I'm old, but I'm not that old. I didn't get to catch, you know, Dr. J in the peak of his career. I didn't get to catch the early years of Magic and Bird. I didn't catch the 70s in a good portion of the beginning of the 80s with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. You know, I don't go back to the days of Wilt Chamberlain and Bill Russell, so even with that, like when you're comparing different players from different eras, you know, I have to use numbers, I have to compare dominance relative to peers and other factors, but I don't have the total and full and complete picture and context. But when it comes to Taker and comparing them to others, I do. I saw the Hogans, the Savages, and the Warriors, and the Andres, you know, at the height of their power in some cases, even though for Andre, yes, admittedly, as you got late into the 80s, it was towards the tail end of it, I get that, but I actually saw these guys, like, I remember seeing these guys, both on television and in person, in the late 80s. I saw all these guys, Brett, Sean, Diesel, Reza Ramoh. Yokozuna, Bam Bam Bigelow, on through to the Stone Colds and the Rocks and the Mick Foley's and the Kurt Angles and the Big Shows and the Canes. I could go on and on and on and on. The Triple H's, you know, Bretts and Shaws. Like, again, I could go on and on and on. Psycho Sick, because he rules the world. But I was able to see all of these guys. And for that, I'm very thankful. Because I was able to live through two absolute peak, powerful, high money-making, high mainstream notoriety and acceptance periods of professional wrestling, the likes of which we probably will never see again. I feel really bad for the wrestling fans that just got into it in the past couple of years. You might be coming into this thinking it's good. It's not. It largely stinks. And I can say that having watched well over 30 years of wrestling because I've seen both really good times and really, really bad times. But I can also say that I'm incredibly thankful for having been able to experience all of that. Being able to see Taker in the early formative years of his career when he scared the ever-loving crap out of me. And if he didn't, Paul Bear sure the hell did. Like, even think about that. Like, The Undertaker might have scared you, but Paul Bear frightened you as a kid. Let's be clear. Paul Bear was the frightening dude. But I've been able to see that evolution and growth and change and character of The Undertaker over the years, like, you know, even when we want to talk about that period of time where it wasn't really The Undertaker and, you know, it's a fake, it's thick news from Judgment Day 2000 to Survivor Series 2003, you know, again, you shouldn't even recognize that period of time. We should just assume it was a couple of years of time off and then it was an alien imposter who took over for him. But, you know, like, I've been able to see all three of his matches against Triple H. I was able to see WrestleMania 25 and 26 against Shawn Michaels. WrestleMania 24 against Edge in the main event, Hell in a Cell. Like, I've been able to see him and Batista, him and Mark him, Orton. You know, the matches against Kane. Like, I could go on and on and on. I've seen all of those matches. And I haven't seen him just going back and watching them years later for retro reviews from this channel or anything like that. I've been able to see him, you know, live or immediately afterwards or in that span of period of time and being able to watch him on Raw over the years and SmackDown over the years. Like, there are so many memories of professional wrestling that I have that are in no, no, no uncertain terms absolutely positively directly correlated to The Undertaker that I am incredibly thankful for all of that. Like, sure, I would like to be a decade younger, don't get me wrong, I absolutely would. But part of me being born when I was and being alive when I have been is that I've been able to see all of this. And that's pretty cool. And I'm incredibly thankful for that. I'm incredibly thankful for a guy that stuck around, a guy that stayed loyal to WWF over the years, that didn't bail and go back to WCW. You know, I'm thankful for the guy that even later on in his life, as his body was betraying him and he was 
clearly at the end, still had such a love and a passion for the business that he would still try to come back and at least do the WrestleMania match every year because he had the streak. And even after the streak, he still couldn't let it go. I think about the guy that gave up a lot over the years to protect the character and the integrity of the character. Like I think of a Vern Gagne. And one thing I always thought about Vern, crazy old man that he was, you know, one thing that, you know, it seems silly and corny, but I really respected about him was that he took professional wrestling as serious as a heart attack. Like he protected it even when the secrets were out and really out and really talked about. He still tried to protect it. And for so many years, Taker probably cost himself literally millions of dollars by staying in character and not doing these special things outside of professional wrestling. Like to his detriment, he protected the Undertaker character. To his bank account's detriment, he didn't go out and seek the glory, glamour projects of Hollywood or TV world or anything like that. The endorsements and all of that. He did some things, but not nearly the amount that he should have been able to do. You know, so I'm thankful to a guy that was so willing to stay so committed to his character that he did sacrifice himself and his personal wealth and success to a certain degree, absolutely, for the greater good. I'm thankful for a guy that went out there and took pride in what he did. I'm thankful for a guy that went out there and for many years, you know, would kind of handpick opponents that he wanted to work with, but in a lot of cases would try to work with guys to elevate the future and worry about the next generation. That's far too lost during the Breakfast Club era, the decade of doom, of reign, of destruction of Cena. Like it's, hey, let's build up the newer faces so that way I can tear them all down. You know, Taker didn't do that nearly as often. Like Taker would put guys over. Yeah, he might win at Mania, but eventually a lot of those guys end up getting the once over on him. You know, so I'm thankful to have seen all of it. All those segments you go back and watch on Raw and the lightning bolt shooting down and the crucifying of Stephanie and the crucifying of Austin and all this other crazy crap that Taker was involved with over the years. I saw all of it. And not as second hand going back in time. I saw it all in real time. I mean, personally, I think some of you should be jealous because I've been able to do that. But I just, like, I can't express enough as a, as a wrestler, as a character, how appreciative I've been to have been able to experience these last three decades of watching The Undertaker. You know, truly one of a kind. Truly nobody like him. Probably, surely will never be again. Um, and you know, I saw it all. I saw it all. And I can't tell you how incredibly grateful I am that I was able to do so.